clunkers. Well, I'm driving my big Cadillac Broham today. You know, seriously, people that are uh, going for the Cash for Clunkers program, they must really have the mind of a seven-year-old, in my opinion. Because $4,500, that's not that much more than what you would get for a trade-in that's worth about that amount anyhow. Maybe $1,000 more or so, but the most you can get is $4,500 for the Cash for Clunkers. And not only that, but the dealers mark up the cars to the most they can get for them. And then when you apply for the cash for clunkers, that's marked up to the highest amount, and then they deduct the 4500 from that. I know there's some dealerships that will take more off of that or include other rebates and stuff, but the majority will not. So you're taking $4,500 from the total amount, but how is that even that much better from what you can actually bargain with a dealership anyways? I've bought many cars, used and new. I bought my first brand new car. Uh, the first one I ever bought as as being brand new was in about 1997. What I bought was a 1998 Oldsmobile LSS with a supercharged engine. That was a very nice car. It was a champagne uh, color on the outside. And I've always been able to bargain with the dealerships to the point of getting even more than $4,000 off of the car. That's not a, a huge uh, accomplishment. I mean, after all, after all, you are uh, paying for all that interest if you finance it and the high taxes and registration fees and insurance. So to be able to mark off $4,500 is not that big of an amount of money. So if you stop and think about it, this is 2009. All these people are going for the cash for clunkers deal and getting rid of all of their so-called clunkers and they're buying all these new cars. So who's going to buy new cars in 2010? Of course people will be buying new cars, but you have this huge chunk of millions of people going for it, so that means that's going to lower the sales possibly for 2010. So right now it all looks fine and dandy. The dealerships are being stimulated and the, um, the car manufacturers mainly and stuff like that. But what about next year? What about the years to come? And meanwhile, you're stuck with high interest rates, or whatever your interest rate is anyways, high or low, but you're stuck with a payment for anywhere from two to five years. Now, why would you want to do that? And then I see some of these cars being traded in, or uh, being well, going under the Cash for Clunkers uh, program, and they're like 1996, 1995, 1997 Lincoln Town cars. It's like, do you guys know what you're trading in? They're very quality cars, very solid cars that that nobody makes anymore. And they're sitting in the back of, of a car dealership marked clunker to be destroyed. And then the person is now stuck paying a payment every month from anywhere from two to six years on a new car that is, isn't even half of what they had before just because it's new but a year or two go but will go by that new car is no longer it's a new car now it's an old car not only that but it's depreciated thousands of dollars that you have lost and you're still paying on it the whole cash for clunkers program and all the people that join in on that reminds me of a herd mentality what that is is like a herd of cattle a herd of sheep they're all in a herd and going straight forward into something, but in reality, they don't know what they're getting themselves into. And how is this helping the actual common poor person or middle, low class people? How is this helping them? Because they're actually, they're undermining the very market that they depend on. If you think about it, that's the way it is. They're undermining and they're stabbing the very class, the very market that the poor class or the middle low class depend on. This reminds me of that whole uh, period of time of when uh, the government was supposedly helping people buy houses and all these people were buying houses, poor people, rich people, middle uh, class people were buying all these houses and what happened and what happened now? Now all these tons of people have actually lost their houses looked fine and dandy for one, two, three years. 
Same thing with this cash for clunkers program. It all looks fine and dandy now, but I would like to see what's actually what's going to happen a year or two down the line. What's going to happen to the, not only to the economy but to people's the people's pocketbooks? I hate to think that part of my tax money is actually going to finance people's cars. So let's go see what the dealerships have in their lot for uh, cash for clunkers. We're at the back of the Toyota dealership here in Santa Rosa, California. All of these vehicles are marked clunker right on the window. Well, first off, there's a 96 or 97 Lincoln Town Car. There's a Jeep Cherokee 4x4. There's a Nissan 300ZX. Clean body. There's a Volvo 760. There's a Ford F-150. There's two Ford Explorers sitting next to each other. Here's a pretty late model Ford Explorer XLT. It's a nice uh, bluish gray. Here's a dark uh, maroon uh, Chrysler New Yorker, 5th Avenue. Real good shape. And here's a real clean Cadillac. Real sharp condition, that's for sure. Here's a two-door Oldsmobile uh, Delta 88 Royale, early 80s. It's a two-door coupe. Another Ford. And another Ford. And there's a Chevrolet there. And another Ford Explorer. A lot of Ford Explorers in here. I see a couple more down there, it looks like. And there's a Lexus sticking out next to that Ford Windstar. And a Chevy Suburban down there, see it? Right there. Oh, another Ford Explorer next to the champagne colored one. I didn't see that. And here's a Sesame Street Big Bird Yellow Ford F-150. <laughs> and another Ford Explorer. Wow, some people don't like Ford Explorers. Well, this car qualifies supposedly for the cash for clunkers. It's a 1991. But would I be getting rid of it? No way. What new car will I find today that can match the quality and the beauty of a car like this? After all, it's a Cadillac. Hold on, we're going for a ride.